Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah most gracious most merciful what do you actually know about Islam by Dr Abdullah Al Qanai It is important not to judge the teachings of Islam based upon the actions of some Muslims like every other community there are a few bad apples and it's unfortunate that the media sometimes focuses on these individuals in the Muslim community I'm writing this booklet to a sincere seeker of truth preface I do not intend to twist your mind here or change your faith my purpose and aim is to make you acquainted with the message of Islam for the sake of knowledge and it's up to you whether to accept it or reject it as the verse states very clearly there is no compulsion in religion truth stands out clearly from falsehood the Quran chapter 2 verse 256 What is Islam? Islam is a religion and a way of life. It means submission, devotion, and obedience to God, the Lord of the heavens and the earth. Therefore, a Muslim is someone who submits himself or herself to God. That is the reason why every prophet and messenger of God and their followers were by definition Muslims as stated in the Quran. That is the reason why every prophet and messenger of God and their followers were by definition Muslims as stated in the Quran. <coughs> Whoever submits his whole self to Allah and is a doer of good, he will get his reward with his Lord. On such shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. The Quran chapter 2 verse 112. Islam is a religion of God and the same message which all the prophets and messengers of Almighty God came with including Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, John the Baptist, Jesus and finally Muhammad may the peace and the blessings of God be upon them all therefore Muslims believed in love and respect all the prophets and messengers of Almighty God the messenger believes in what has been revealed to him from his Lord and so do the believers they all believe in Allah and his angels and his books and his messengers we make no difference between any of his messengers and they say we hear and obey our Lord your forgiveness do we crave and to you is the eventual course the Quran chapter 2 verse 285 <coughs> Islam aims to preserve the basic rights of a human beings establishing security and peace in society and the world as a whole Islam urges its followers to be kind polite decent and good citizens in a society Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him said the best among you are those who have the best manners and character Bukhari 56 what is Islam all about Islam calls for and nurtures a loving and direct relationship between God and humans with no intercessors or intermediaries. Is it to Allah alone that sincere devotion and obedience is due? The Quran, chapter 39, verse 3. When you pray and pray directly to God, and when you want to repent from your sins, you ask God directly for forgiveness. And when my servants ask you concerning me, then surely I am very near I answer the prayer of the suppliant when he calls on me the Quran chapter 2 verse 186 and and your Lord says call upon me I will respond to you the Quran chapter 40 verse 60 <coughs> Islam is a religion of pure human nature and clarity it urges and calls its followers to ask about all issues or problems they may encounter or endure from the simple problems of their everyday life to the deepest most complex and also the most incomprehensible questions of their existence 
So ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. The Quran, chapter 16, verse 43. People of knowledge refers to the experts in the various fields known for their expertise. In Islam, the whole doctrine is clearly explained. Therefore, there are no obscure or mysterious components to the belief. Allah would explain to you and guide you by the examples of those who were before you and would turn to you in mercy. Allah is all-knowing, all-wise, and Allah would turn to you in mercy, but those who follow vain desires would have you go immensely astray. Allah would lighten your difficulties, for man was created weak in the flesh. The Quran, chapter 4, verse 26 to, or verses 26 to 28. Islam is not a religion of monasticism. Islam is not a religion of monasticism or separation from the worldly life. On the other hand, it does not allow the uncontrolled indulgence of worldly pleasures and desires. The uncontrolled indulgence of worldly pleasures and desires it does not allow this at all. It teaches us. It teaches us to nourish. It teaches us to nourish and satisfy our soul and spiritual needs as much as we need food and provision for our body. It is a complete social system which promotes a lifestyle based on moderation, embracing both religious and mundane affairs, and considers them complementary to one another. Neither aspect should prevail at the expense of the other. But seek with that wealth which Allah has bestowed on you, the home of the hereafter, and forget not your portion of legal enjoyment in this world, and be kind as Allah has been kind and good to you, and seek not mischief in the land. The Quran, chapter 28, verse 77. Islam places men and women all equal before their Lord, before their Lord, Rabb, regardless of their race, tongue, national origin, appearance, wealth, and social status. The criterion for differentiation among them arises in their compliance with the divine regulations. O mankind, we have created you from a male and a female, and have made you into nations and tribes so that you may know one another. Verily the best of you, verily the noblest of you in the sight of Allah, is the best in conduct. Allah is all-knowing, all-aware. The Quran, chapter 49, verse 13. The most pivotal benefits that Islam provides for the individual are 1. True happiness and inner peace. 2. Practical guidance in leading a good life. 3. A correct understanding of a human nature. 4. Forgiveness from all previous sins. 5. The gateway to eternal paradise. 6. Salvation from hell fire. And most importantly, the seventh one is seeing Allah the Creator on the day of judgment, which is the most incomparable enjoyment to the extent that it is much more enjoyable than even entering paradise. No comparison whatsoever. In order to gain such benefits and much more, there is primarily one basic step to take. It is to bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah and that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. This is what we call testimony of faith, which is the first pillar in Islam. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Islam has been built on five pillars testifying that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Establishing the prayers, paying the zakat, paying the zakat, the annual poor do, the obligatory annual poor do, making the pilgrimage to the house in Mecca once in a lifetime and fasting in Ramadan. Bukhari, volume 8, Muslim 16. It is important not to let our mind be framed by barriers or limitations that may discourage us, such as the use of the Arabic language. The meaning of Allah is in fact simply Almighty God, 
and it is an exclusive title which no one else besides him has been given in all of human history. When I use the word Allah, I mean the same God that created Adam and Eve, the same God that sent prophets such as Abraham, Job, Lot, David, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace and a blessing be upon them all. I do not mean a different God. I do not mean a different God than the God that spoke to Moses and split the sea for him. I mean the exact same God that saved Noah in the ark and Jonah in the whale. I mean the exact same God that created Jesus in the womb of Virgin Mary. Even Arab Christians use the word Allah when they refer to the creator of the universe. And that's his proper name. You can verify this in the Arabic translations of the Holy Bible. Allow me now to explain what is meant by the testimony of faith. The first part of the testimony of faith, according to the Quran, the final revelation, no being is worthy of worship except Allah, and Allah is absolutely one and absolutely unique. The verse states very clearly the meaning of which, say, He is Allah, the one and only. He is the eternal, the absolute. He was not begotten, nor does He beget, and there is none like unto Him. The Quran, chapter 112, verses 1 to 5. Allah, may He be exalted alone, caused all things to exist when there was nothing. And among His signs are the night and the day, and the sun and the moon. Do not prostrate to the sun nor to the moon, but prostrate to Allah who created them, if Him it is that you serve. The Quran, chapter 41, verse 37. He, Allah, sustains and maintains creation without any need from it, and nothing happens in the creation except what He allows to happen. The Quran states in the meaning of which Allah is the creator of all things and He is the guardian over all things. The Quran chapter 39 verse 62. In recognition of this reality, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, used to often say, There is no movement nor power except by Allah's will. Allah, may He be exalted, has the most magnificent names and the sublime perfect attributes as mentioned in the Quran and the teachings of Prophet, uh, and the teaching of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, Prophet Muhammad. He is Allah, the one and only, than whom there is no other guide beside Him. He is Allah, the one and only, than whom there is no other God besides Him, the knower of the invisible and the visible. He is the beneficent merciful. He is the, sover the sovereign Lord, Rabb. He is the sovereign Lord, the Holy One, peace, the peace, the keeper of faith, the guardian, the majestic, the compeller, the superb, Glorified be Allah from all that they ascribe as partner unto Him. The Quran, chapter 59, verses 22 to 24. The question, however, usually arises. Why should we worship the Creator? The answer is simply because He is worthy of our veneration and worship, and to Him belongs all ultimate perfection. So we should acknowledge this perfection as well as such bounties bestowed upon us by Allah, may He be exalted. Our eyesight, hearing, sense of smell, sense of taste, heartbeat and many more, all we have received as gifts from the Creator. The Quran tells us very clearly in the meaning of a which. Whoever goes right, then he goes right only for the benefit of his own self. And whoever goes astray, then he goes astray to his own loss. 
No bearer of burdens can bear the burden of another. The Quran, chapter 17, verse 15. Therefore, we should acknowledge Allah as his beneficiaries and show him praise, devotion, and obedience. The second part of the testimony of faith, at around 570 CE, Muhammad, peace and a blessing be upon him, was born in Arabia. Orphaned at an early age, he was brought up by his uncle and grandfather. Among his people, he was known to have the best character and gave the finest example of being upright, merciful, compassionate, truthful, generous, and distant from all evil characteristics prevalent during that time. Whoever knew himself, whoever knew him well, whoever knew him well or read his legacy was fascinated and enchanted by him. Michael Hart in his book, The 100, studied the history of 100 of the most influential people in history and ranked them accordingly. He said, my choice of Muhammad, he said, my choice of Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others, but he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and secular levels. Also, Julius Messerman, a U.S. psychoanalyst, in Time magazine, July 15, 1974, said, Perhaps the greatest leader of all times was Muhammad. Who said that? Julius Messerman, a U.S. psychoanalyst. Karen Armstrong, a British feminist and former nun, in her book, Muhammad, a biography of the Prophet, wrote, In such a primitive world, what Muhammad achieved for women was extraordinary. The very idea that a woman could be witness or could inherit anything at all in her own right was astonishing. It is worth mentioning that Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was an illiterate man during his entire life. He was unable to read or write. And you were not able to recite a book before this book came, nor are you able to transcribe it with your right hand. In that case, indeed, would the talkers of vanities have doubted. The Quran, chapter 29, verse 48. So in the book we call the Quran, so profound with its strength, power, eloquence, and beauty, was revealed to Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. It was by itself, and still is to our day, the greatest sign, miracle, and proof that his message came from Allah, and that Muhammad is his prophet and messenger. This is a book, the Quran, which we have sent down to you, full of blessings that they may ponder over its verses, and that those with intelligence may reflect. The Quran, chapter 38, verse 29. The people of Egypt in the time of Pharaoh were known for their powers of magic and sorcery. Hence, Moses, peace and blessings be upon him, was sent to them with similar yet overwhelming signs. Moses was given the power to confront, was given the power to confront the sorcerers unlike anyone else in his time. In the time of Jesus Christ, peace and blessings be upon him, the son of Mary, peace and blessings be upon her, the children of Israel were known for their knowledge of medicine. Consequently, Jesus Christ came with medical cures, bringing back the sight and curing the leper, etc., that could not be bettered by anyone in his time, indeed, up until today. The Arabs, being the people of the desert, they had no art, industry, or science. Yet, they were known for their exquisite poetry. Allah, may he be exalted and glorified, challenged the Arabs to produce a whole book of equal beauty in the Qur'an. But they could not fulfill this challenge, and nobody will do. 
Or do they say he fabricated the message? Nay, they have no faith. Let them then produce a recital like unto it. If it be, they speak the truth. The Quran chapter 52 verse 33 or verses 33 and 34. The challenge was then decreased to 10 chapters, but still they could not fulfill it. Or they may say he forged it. Say, bring forward 10 chapters forged like unto it, and call to your aid whomsoever you can, other than Allah, if you speak the truth. The Quran chapter 11 verse 13. Finally, the challenge was decreased to only one chapter. Yet, they were not able to do so. Or do they say, he forged it, say, bring then a chapter like unto it, and call to your aid anyone you can, besides Allah, if you speak the truth. The Quran, chapter 10, verse 38. And still today, this challenge has not, and will not be met. Say, if the whole of mankind and jinn were to gather together to produce the like of this Quran, they could not produce the like thereof, even if they backed up each other with help and support. The Quran, chapter 17, verse 88. Surely, this is one of many proofs that the Quran is from a divine source. With this great miracle, the Quran, Allah, may He be exalted, has set several rational and scientific approaches and arguments for all mankind to ease their request for the truth. No falsehood can approach it from before or behind it. It is sent down by the one full of wisdom worthy of all praise. The Quran chapter 41 verse 42. Allow me to give you a few examples of both. The rational argument. Allah, may he be exalted, has said, in the meaning of which, were they created by nothing, or were they themselves the creators? Or did they create the heavens and the earth? Rather, they have no firm belief. The Quran, chapter 52, verses 35 and 36. Suppose that you travel in the countryside where nothing is in sight except a plain land. A few months later, you return to the same plot of land and find a well-constructed building. How did it come into existence? How can come, how can, uh, come with the three distinct explanations? How, sorry, let me repeat that. We can come with the three distinct explanations. Suppose, you are tra you are, suppose that you travel, suppose that you travel in the countryside where well, nothing is in the sight except a plain land. A few months later, you return to the same plot of land and find a well-constructed building. How did it come into existence? We can come with the three distinct explanations. Either, one, it came into existence by chance or coincidence. Two, it has built itself. Three, a builder has built it. As for the first and second explanations, they are illogical and unscientific. So, we are therefore left with a third. Consequently, Allah, may He be exalted, asks the people who deny His existence, were they themselves the creators? Since they are not going to acknowledge that they were created by a creator, then the other choice is that they were the creators, or that is an uh, and that is an impossibility. And that is an impossibility. If they themselves were not the creators, then what is the answer? Someone must have created them. It's obvious, or it is obvious, that nothing comes from nothing. And since there is a something, i.e. the universe, then there must be a creator. Every building has a builder. Every book has a writer. And the creation has a creator. And in order to indicate to them that humanity, compared to the heavens and earth, in its majesty, vastness, and its greatness is incomparable. Allah, may he be exalted, then said, Or did they create the heavens and the earth? Therefore, humans should not be arrogant to ascribe everything to their own greatness and consider themselves the masters and the center of the universe, as 
very often is the case in the world today. The Quran says, have you seen that which you emit? Have you seen that which you emit? Is it you who creates it or are we the creator? We have decreed death among you and we are not to be outdone in that we will change your likenesses and produce you in that form which you do not know. And you have already known the first creation, so will you not remember? And have you seen that seed which you sow? Is it you who makes it grow? Or are we the grower? If we willed, we could make it dry debris, and you would remain in wonder, saying, <coughs> Indeed, we are now in debt. Rather, we have been deprived. And have you seen the water that you drink? Is it you who brought it down from the clouds? Or is it we who bring it down? If you willed, we could make it bitter. So why are you not grateful? And have you seen the fire that you ignite? Is it you who produced its tree? Or are we the producer? We have made it a reminder and a provision for the travelers. So exalt the name of your Lord the Most Great. The Quran chapter 56 verses 58 till 74. Imagine for a moment being in a ship in the middle of the ocean. Suddenly a violent wind overtakes you. The waves surge from all sides, so huge and powerful to overthrow your ship and drown you. You try your best to master the vessel, but you quickly realize that you are being overwhelmed by the forces of nature. You call for help, but no one answers. What would you do in this case? Wouldn't your natural disposition call for someone high in the skies and a supreme power, i.e. the Creator, the Lord, the Rabb? Both common sense and intelligence tells us that if there is a God, then God has to be first cause and He will be the uncreated Creator of everything else. Therefore, asking the question, who created God, is nonsensical, is nonsensical is nonsensical, and to deny a creator is irrational and superstitious. Only through the final divine revelation the Quran confusion can be removed. The above verses are strong logical arguments for someone who denies the existence of God and has no power and has no sorry answer and has no answer to the question of where we have all come from. The scientific argument. It's important first of all to clarify that the Quran is a book of science and guidance and it's not a book of science as its revelations and message encompass all aspects of human life. Verily, this Quran guides to that which is most upright and gives the glad tidings to the believers who work deeds of righteousness that they shall have a magnificent reward. The Quran chapter 19 verse 7. We must also realize that science, that science, S C I E N C E, explains the how. We must also realize that science explains the how and not the why. And if we understand this, we can approach the matter in a way that is complementary to both religion and science. The scientific arguments put forward in the Quran are there to prove that the revelation was, without any doubt, the word of our Creator, i.e. Allah. Not only have none of these arguments ever proved contrary to the established facts of science in the course of history, but many of them have been proved or proven correct only by modern science. We shall show them our signs in the universe and in their own souls until it becomes manifest to them that it is the truth. The Quran chapter 41 verse 53. Modern science tells us that the heavens and the earth came from the same entity and they were separated afterwards. The Quran revealed in the 7th century tells us about this separation and who was responsible for it. Have not those who disbelieve know that the heavens and the earth were of one piece, 
And then we have parted them. The Quran, chapter 21, verse 30. Dr. Alfred Kroner, professor of geology, said, somebody who did not know something about nuclear physics 1400 years ago could not, I think, be in a position to find out from his own mind, for instance, that the earth and the heavens had the same origin. Modern science also informs us that every living, modern science also informs us that every living thing is made of water, H2O. This is a well-established fact and common knowledge in biological sciences. Interestingly, we read in the Quran revealed more than 1400 years ago in the end of the uh, same verse, we made from water every living thing. Will they not then believe the Quran, chapter 21, verse 30? And also, Allah has created every living creature from water, and of them are those that move on their bellies, and of them are those that walk on two legs, and of them, and of them are those that walk on four. Allah creates what He wills. Indeed, Allah is over all things competent. The Quran, chapter 24, verse 45 and and it is he who has created from water a human being and made him a relative by lineage and marriage and ever is your Lord competent concerning creation the Quran chapter 25 verse 54 <coughs> interestingly the Quran describes the growth and development of the human embryo in the womb of the mother in several passages. The Quran says, O oh mankind, if you are in doubt about the resurrection, consider that we created you out of dust, then out of sperm, then out of a leech-like clot, then out of a morsel of flesh, partly formed and partly unformed, in order that we may manifest our power to you, our power to you, and we cause whom we will to rest in the wombs for an appointed term. The Quran, chapter 22, verse 5. Dr. Keith Moore, professor of anatomy, said, It is clear to me that these statements must have come to Muhammad from God or Allah, because almost all of this knowledge was not discovered until many centuries later. This proves to me that Muhammad must have been a messenger of God. These are only a few examples of the many scientific miracles of the Qur'an. For many centuries they have been standing up to the challenge of the sincere seeker of truth. Not only to prove the divine origin of the revelation, but also to draw the attention to the wonders of Allah's creation in a very eloquent and powerful manner. Encouraging people to seek knowledge and thereby increase their faith. Those who truly fear Allah among his servants are those who have knowledge. For Allah is exalted in might, oft forgiving. The Quran, chapter 35, verse 28. The proposal. <coughs> the proposal. If you decide to accept the testimony of faith, i.e. to embrace Islam, I would like to congratulate you on your first step towards true success in this life and the hereafter. Whoever submits himself to Allah, and does good, he has indeed taken hold of the firmest thing which one can grasp, and with Allah rests the end and decision of all of affairs. Of all affairs. The Quran, chapter 31, verse 22. Being a Muslim entails willful submission and active obedience to Allah, and living in accordance with his message. Does he not know who, ha who he created? Does he not know? who he created, and he is the knower of the subtleties, the aware. The Quran, chapter 67, verse 14. It is the greatest of gifts, and all praise must be due to Allah for showing us the light, where we would otherwise struggle eternally in the darkness of our confusion. Allah is the guardian of those who believe. He brings them out of the darkness into the light. The Quran, chapter 2, verse 257. All you who believe, fear Allah, be mindful of your duty towards Him, and believe in His Messenger, 
and he will bestow on you a double portion of his mercy. He will provide you, he will provide for you a light, he will provide for you a light by which you shall walk straight in your path, and he will forgive you your past. For Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. The Quran chapter 57 verse 28. Muslims have certain obligations towards one another, one of which is giving sincere advice. Our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Allah will not cease to help his servant as long as that servant, that servant is helping his brother. Muslim, uh, hadith number 2699. Therefore, I would like to advise, to advise the following. Therefore, I would like to advise you with the following. One, don't expect that you will comply right away with all the regulations. Two, take it easy step by step so as to make your belief pleasant to yourself. Three, be sincere to yourself and have sincerity towards Allah. Four, start to learn and read the authoritative sources of Islam, the Quran and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. May the blessings and peace be upon him. Five, understand that you are responsible for your actions and capable of fulfilling your duties. 6. Be careful from the so-called few Muslims who have deviated from Islam. So you have to make sure that you refer to the authoritative sources of Islam all the time. 7. Make sure you uh, have companions, righteous companion or righteous companionship all the time to learn from and to remind each other. The advice I have given to many new Muslims is not only a pleasure for me to give, but is also my duty and sincere concern. Abu Huraira, a great companion of the Prophet, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Six are the rights of a Muslim over another Muslim. It was said to him, O oh Allah's Messenger, what are these? Thereupon he said, When you meet him, Offer him greetings. When he invites you to a feast, accept it. When he seeks your counsel, give it to him. And when he sneezes and says, All praise is due to Allah, you say, May Allah show mercy to you. And when he is ill, visit him. And when he dies, follow his buyer to the cemetery. And when he dies, follow his buyer to the cemetery. Muslim Hadith number 5379 Universal Brotherhood is a central point and a crucial element of Islam and a beautiful and a precious value rarely found in a modern world driven by empty materialism and individualism. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, has told us none of you truly believes until he loves for his brother or his neighbor what he loves for himself. Bukhari Volume 12 and Muslim, Volume 64. I encourage you to take the first steps to initiate friendship with your brothers, sisters in faith, to visit your local mosque, masjid, and ask for advice and for reading material. A crucial book to start with is Bearing True Witness by Dr. Lawrence B. Brown, www.leveltruth.com The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, the, the, believers, the believers are to each other like a building, each part supporting the rest. Bukhari 48 and Muslim 2584. Bukhari 481 and Muslim 2585. From now on, you are not alone on his on this path. From now on you are not alone on this path. For every single person embracing the true religion pleases Allah immensely and is a great delight for all Muslims. And help one another in goodness and piety and do not help one another in sin and aggression. The Quran chapter 5 verse 2. Even if you don't accept Islam now, I would like to ask you to keep an open mind and an open heart and to thank you for taking the time to read this booklet. My final remark is 
I would like to remind you that we all face death and we don't know when death will strike. As such, this is out of our hands. So we therefore need to be prepared. Isn't the one who accepts this reality and prepares for it using his intelligence better than the one who tries to forget it and is taken by surprise? Say, the death from which you flee will truly overtake you. Then you will be sent back to the knower of the invisible and the visible. And he will tell you the truth of the things that you did. The Quran chapter 62 verse 8. May Allah guide us all to the right path. Ameen. Please send me your comments and queries to Dr. Abdullah al Qanai, P.O. Box 604, Sufat, S A F A T, 13007, Kuwait. Website www.gladtiding. Glad hyphen tiding dot com again www dot glad hyphen tiding dot com email a underscore a l q e n a e i at hotmail dot com twitter at d r a b q Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much for reading uh, or for listening to this uh, reading that I hope will be of a great benefit to all of us. Alhamdulillah.